Hello and welcome to my presentation called Enhancing Graduate Skills and Assessment Approaches Through an Annual Student Conference. Uh, I'm Dr Sharon Greenwood, I'm a lecturer in Public Health and I'm also the programme lead for the MPH, which is the Masters of Public Health on campus. In addition to this, I'm also the Deputy Director of Education for the School of Health and Wellbeing at the University. In this presentation, I'm going to cover some of the issues that I faced when I first took over running the Masters in Public Health programme and talk through a particular problem that I faced. Um, within this, I'm going to talk about a little bit about the initiative that I developed and how it has worked in practice. I became the programme lead um, in March 2022 for the Masters of Public Health on campus programme. Prior to this, we'd seen a vast increase in student numbers. We'd, been, we'd risen from around 25 to 140 over the course of two years. This obviously had consequences for our staffing levels and had implications in relation to the pedagogical um, delivery of our courses and of our teaching. Um, most of the assessments at this point focused on written skills, including the MPH project, which is what I'm going to talk about today. Prior to the changes I made, um, the MPH project was 60 credits and it was worth 12 to 15,000 words um, and worth 100% of the overall grade. Uh, students were assessed against 10 ILOs and it didn't actually help to showcase alternative forms of communication, which could potentially disadvantage some, some groups of students. Part of what I tried to do when I came in as programme lead was to take a programmatic approach to authentic assessment. And with this, I overhauled and diversified the assessments across the programme. Um, prior to, to the, the change, most of the submissions were written and there was minimal presentations. This led to a large increase in, in staff workload and of marking of written material. Um, students said that they wanted a memorable experience of studying at Glasgow. And I was left with the position of where to start. So I decided to embrace the authentic assessment and assessment for learning ideas. On the slide here, we can see the graduate attributes that the University of Glasgow prides itself on. These include things such as being a subject specialist, being confident and being a reflective learner. When I mapped out these graduate attributes in relation to the older model of 100% written assessment, we can see that not all of the graduate attributes are touched upon within this model. This led me to identify a clear gap. I wanted to enhance student skills, to reduce high stakes assessment and to provide students with a lasting impact of their time at the University of Glasgow. And I was keen to think about a meaningful way to enhance assessment for students without increasing the workload for staff. So this was the problem as I identified it. I decided to change the MPH project to actually be a, a more diverse form of assessment and to reduce the high stakes element of the assessment. I reduced the word count from uh, 12 to 15,000 words to 10 to 12,000 words, and I introduced a 10 minute work in progress presentation. I also uh, comprehensively mapped the intended learning outcomes and I reduced them from 10 down to four. Obviously, introducing a presentation with a high number of students has potential implications for staff and for staffing levels. Um, and I was keen to avoid any extra burden onto staffing time, but also to increase the student experience and to enhance it. Um, one way I thought that this could be potentially meaningfully obtained is through a student conference. So I created the MPH conference to allow for a focus on student skill development. Um, this allowed for authentic assessment with a large cohort with limited staff available for marking, but it also helped to improve the overarching quality of projects by encouraging students to work on their projects a lot earlier than they would usually do. There's surprisingly little subtle evidence um, exploring the use of student conferences in education or within assessment settings. Um, Larkin in 2014 with engineering students 
talks about preparing a conference paper in line with professional requirements. And these students were required to prepare the paper in a written format prior to delivering the paper orally. Um, this was carried out with a much smaller group of students compared to the, the MPH cohort that I was managing. Bergami in 2006 spoke about doing a student led conference to help support the professional development of business students. And this was more along the lines of exposing students to uh, the organisational factors of doing a student conference. However, Lund in 2013 reported success with the approach, um, working with interdisciplinary students and argued that it typified an authentic assessment. They argued that it increased confidence and communication skills, enhanced professionalism and it encouraged students to take pride in their work. The first MPH student conference ran in June 2023 in the Claris Pears building, which at that point was the School of Health and Wellbeing's brand new home. We had over 72 student presentations over two days in parallel sessions and in total 15 members of staff attended. I embedded added extras throughout the conference to allow students to build some skills that perhaps were not integral to the curriculum. So having a career session, allowing students to explore um, the benefits of LinkedIn, uh, embedding alumni panel to hear from MPH graduates and where they were now, and having some keynotes from established and from early career academics. Following this, I circulated a survey to the staff and the students, and it's from here that I share some of the information that, that came from the survey. Prior to the conference taking place, the students were very nervous about delivering a presentation and having 20% of their 60 credits um, attributed to a presentation. However, after the conference, most of the students' fears were allayed um, when we had 100% success rate with everyone attaining over a C3 at the student presentations. Um, this reduced the high stakes nature of the assessment. It gave students a bit of confidence and belief in themselves that they were on the right path and they were understanding what was expected of them. It also allowed the assessment of alternative forms of communication and it supported those who have English as a second language or disabled students and other um, students from other disenfranchised groups. It's reflective. It allowed students to consider the journey they had been on through their postgraduate career so far. It motivated them to work on their project earlier and it enhanced their graduate skills, which was the main aim of what I was attempting to do. It, build, it built on their communication skills, it helped to build confidence, it helped to foster collaboration and embodied a sense of professionalism throughout. During the conference, the students were able to leave some post-it notes of positive comments to their peers, but actually some of them left positive comments for me and actually a lot of them mentioned the, the conference and the benefits that they had. Um, with some clear em emphasis on um, the conference being amazing and that it was a beneficial for them. In addition to surveying students, I also surveyed staff who attended and who marked for us. Um, and staff reported that they found the presentations easier and quicker to mark, but also the more enjoyable to mark. Um, they enjoyed getting involved with the sessions and enjoyed being able to speak to the students about their student projects. Beyond the public health team, um, which is quite a small team, we got other staff within the School of Health and Wellbeing to be, be involved. And this helped to raise awareness of our students' amazing capabilities and the innovation that can be present within our cohort. Staff who were also supervisors also benefited from having more motivated students. So it meant that timelines were increased. And it also provided a comfortable first step for some of our early career researchers who were new or less familiar to marking. And it helped to reduce that feeling of feedback anxiety um, with being nervous about giving feedback to students for the very first time. So following on from this, our conference is running again for the second time in June 2024. Um, I have a, a massive team of student volunteers who are, are keen to get involved with helping with conference organisation, realising the potential for this as being a benefit to their CV and to future skills. Um, 
we have invited our external examiners who noted at our exam board that this was um, a really innovative approach and they were keen to adopt it in their own institutions. Um, I am keen to, to embrace a more kind of formalised system of peer feedback um, during it. So rather than um, post-it notes on a board, I would like to embed some form of peer feedback to allow students to give uh, proper feedback to one another. And um, I would like to next year extend the invitation to potential employers. So for us, that would be things like Public Health Scotland, the Scottish Government or potentially third sector organisations. I would also like to explore the potential for um, delivering an online conference for our distance learning students. Thank you so much for listening and if you have any questions or comments, please do send them my way either just now or send them by email. Thank you.